Welcome MTG fans, I'm going to tell you about cards that are going to rise or drop and also the rise and fall of zombies. Also you can check out my tournament play on MTGO where I played in preliminary um, tournament events and you can actually see that and actually see how I favored versus Torrential Gearhulk and also um, the very source. I played black green and I'll be pushing that. But in this being said, this could be a very disappointing video or a very good video as in regards to falling of cards, the prices. Or so this can work out one or two ways. You can buy low or be disappointed that the cards are going to drop in value. Again, these are going to be reflective of MTGO prices. That's Magic the Gathering Online. But furthermore, this could probably also translate to physical paper. So let's talk about 10 cards that are going to rise and fall. And also, the rise and fall of zombies. Alright, so let's talk about card number one, and that is Relentless Dead. Um, that card is going to drop um, about mid-May, so I'm making this video as of May 29th. It had a price point of about $14. Relentless Dead, if you ever wanted to build zombie decks, well, there's going to be a couple zombie cards on this list that fell pretty heavily. So you can get them at a low price point. Again, you can check out me playing zombies versus black green. Guys, Zombies just doesn't stand up to Marty Vehicle's sideboard. Number one, um, Relentless Dead can be burnt out by Suns. It's a, it's a red card for three mana that deals three damage to every creature. That really stalls Zombies pretty badly. Fumigate really destroys Zombies. There's a lot of white cards. Planar Outburst destroys Zombies. There's a lot of cards out that are in Standard. Um, understand that Standard, the rotation doesn't happen until the end of September. And, well... We're going to see that. So Relentless Dead has plummeted. It's seen a $14 um, dollar high, basically, in mid-May. And it's going to drop and continue to drop. Um, the last time I seen it, it was plummeting right around $9 on MTGO online. I think it's going to drop between 6 to $9. And I think, it, guys, it's going to stay between 6 to 9 bucks. I think that's where it's going to be at compared to where it was in its previous 10 days. That's how fast magic changes. So our card number one is Relentless Dead because it's almost going to drop by 30 to 40% in value. Next card right behind it, the Wanderer. And it's a Dread. The Dread Wanderer. And guys, I'll either put this up, uh, um, I'll either put cards up on the screen or I'll put them in the description. So either one's going to happen uh, for you. And basically, Dread Wanderer. Well, that car is also plummeted big time, and yes, it, it actually had a price mark of about three bucks on MTGO online at one point in time. Now you can get the card for under a dollar. Dread Wanderer has a great, awesome ability. Um, and again, I'll either put a picture up here as you'll be looking at it, or you can view it. Uh, put something in the description for you. But Dread Wanderer. People forgot to read the last part of the last sentence of that card. I've been saying that in my previous videos or future videos that I'm going to put out. In Dread Wanderer, it's a great card. for So for one drop, you know, we get a 2-1 creature. And it comes in play tapped. I mean, it's pretty much like Savannah Lions to white that comes in crooked. It comes in tapped. But you can also, its abilities, return it back onto the battlefield. The problem? Well... <laughs> It's less liable to do that because zombie decks that typically run Liliana's uh, Mastery, which is basically, that's cost 5 mana. And also Liliana's Death's Majesty, which costs also 5 mana. And also you're holding on to Lord of the Accursed. And we're also holding on to Disagraph Colossus and Wait Until Our Zombies Die, which is an another 3 drop. So again, you know, Dread Wonder itself is acceleration, but bringing it back into play is very hard because the last sentence of the last of the card says you can only bring it back into the battlefield as you'd cast a sorcery, and people forgot to read this part of the card, the last half of the last sentence, which states that you can only do this if you have one or fewer cards in your hand. So basically, you cannot be holding on to your Ruinous Pass, your Grass of Darkness, your Fatal Pushes, waiting for Hearts of Kirin, waiting for your Planeswalk, you know, waiting for somebody to drop, uh, you know, Torrential Gear Hall, and be able to try to somehow Ruinous Path it, you know, or try to cast it out. You, you just can't do that. Now, I'm a firm believer that zombies can be very competitive, but straight mono black zombies, yeah, the Pro Tour, not so much anymore. That was two weeks ago. This is now. Dread Wonder is now below, well below a dollar. In fact, actually in the MTGO line, I'm going to believe that it's going to drop below 50 cents. All right, 
And here's my list. So next on my list, and I feel like my head is like preventing against the light. It's like a big dome. Like my head's like the moon, and that's like the sun. Okay, well, with that being said, Dark Salvation. It saw a big plummet. Actually, it's lower by 50% as of right now. The current price point on it is $0.38 cents for MTGO Online. It actually had a price point of $0.79 cents and looking up. Yeah, that is a drop. So if you're into zombies, you can build your zombie deck on MTGO Online for really cheap now. I mean, it, I don't even think the whole deck is going to cost you $100 in MTGO Online pricing. Now, don't get me wrong, Dark Salvation is a great card, you know. It's like Grass of Darkness on steroids on sorcery speed, because basically you should have zombies and zombie tokens out by the time that you're going to use Dark Salvation. But unfortunately, unfortunately for prices, zombies fall, so does the rest. Why is this video so depressing? Let's get some hunger. Let's be hungry about stuff. Yeah, we'll long see this hunger. So when I played in tournaments, the number one deck that is taking over, either Works Marvel is going nowhere, um, but neither is Caesar's Hunger. As long as it stays in format, again, things don't rotate out until the end of September. So we are faced with Easter Mars. We're faced with the Marvel's Works decks, and we're also faced with Torrential Gear Hulk, but Torrential Gear Hulk's there to stay even after things cycle out, so it doesn't really matter. Caesar's Hunger is here to stay for right now of the summer of 2017, and it's going to bring in a hefty price. People are getting kind of get worried about their Caesar's Hungers because basically they shot up in value. They were actually priced point at $9 at one point in time, basically about a month and a half ago, and people are starting to figure out with Etherworks Marvel and the release of Amon Ket. That Caesar's Hunger was not going to be damaged whatsoever by the rotation at all. And basically, Caesar's Hunger is seeing a spike. I believe it's going to get even higher. Last time I checked, it was at an $18 to $20 price point. I think it's going to go way higher than that. I think it's going to stick between $20 and $25 coming into this week. So Caesar's Hunger, if you're trying to buy the deck, you're going to be buying it pretty high. But... You can probably get your Etherworks Marvel a little bit on the cheaper, because I think that's going to drop by about 10%, but Caesar's Hunger is probably going to go, see nothing but up. Because there's plenty of ways that you can get Caesar's Hunger in the game. You can exert a green creature, just drop it on the board, and actually you can use, what I also have on my list, is you can actually grab Nihiri, the Harbinger, and basically, you can use that Planeswalker to fetch Caesar's Hunger, although it would return to your hand, so I don't know. I mean, I guess you could Nahari that in the play, because Nahari, it can go off in basically three turns, right? Um, you can clock it at three turns, it can go off. And it's a relatively cost four mana to bring out, so it's really not that hard in red-white decks to play. And basically, you can you know, bring that out and uh, swing it, it would have haste. And then you could just fling it, you know, deal 10, 10 damage right to your opponent's face. I can see a deck where it's running Caesar's Hunger, Nahari's, Aetherworks Marvel. And there's a lot of red cards that actually give you energy tokens to feed in to Aetherworks Marvel. So I can actually see a possible red-white deck coming um, to a theater near you or to a playset near you. Somebody being very creative here. Um, could actually do that. So they can bring in Caesar's Hunger through many different ways, through Nahari. Now, if you do bring it in through that Planeswalker, um, Harbinger, yes, it's not going to have its cast ability, so it's not going to have its Annihilator 2, but certainly a 10-10 indestructible swinging at you and removing the top 20 cards of your deck into exile is just no joke to be played around with. Caesar's Hunger his value is going to go up, and I believe it's going to go up roughly about 10%, even maybe 20%. I think it's going to stay in the 20 to $25 range, but it could see peak highs, like Torrential Gearhulk, of about $27 on MTGO Online. Well, I hate to break some bad news, and Crypt Breaker is going to be it. Like all zombies, Crypt Breaker has fallen dramatically. It has great playability, I understand that, but zombies as a whole, I mean, listen... Crypt Breaker can die from many different things. You know, Dark Salvation itself, Fatal Push, Grabs of Darkness, I mean, Shock, Magma Spray, um, anything that deals one damage. I mean, Walking Ballista just loves it. I mean, it's just pretty much a card that is just 
you can kill it with a sneeze. I mean, the common cold can kill a Crypt Breaker. Unless you have Lord of the Cursed out. And here's the thing with that. Crypt Breaker has fallen, and the prices reflect that. Again, Zombies decks. This is a great, beautiful time to buy into Zombies, because you can actually build a Zombie deck that you couldn't afford just even a month ago. Is it crazy that a month ago we were talking about Zombies being the number one deck, potentially? And now you can get its main card... Is this crazy? Crypt Breaker has fallen <laughs> under its $3 price mark. The main staple in the Zombies deck that helps you draw cards, you know, and discard cards. And I think has some great synerg uh, it's synergistic with Alms to the Veins, because you can cast things with its madness cost. That card is not only fallen under 3 bucks, it's also fallen under 2 bucks, and I believe that it's actually going to fall under $1.50. So if you're playing MTG online, notice the trend. You can get Relentless Deads for probably, I'm going to say, 6 to $9, and you can get your Dark Salvations for $0.30 cents on the dollar, so basically $0.30, cents, and you can get Crypt Breaker, well, under $1.50. Well, Almond Kent released Gods, but let's talk about Lord. And that is the main zombie deck, Lord of the Accursed. Lord of the Accursed is going to plummet in value. Not that it ever had too much value, but at least was baying for about 50 cents. Now, it's dropping like all other zombies. And the reason why is because all other zombies. And that's exactly what the card reads. Lord of the Accursed, if you look at it, it says all other zombies get plus one, plus one. But itself does not get plus one, plus one. So to buff it up, you have to have Liliana's Magistry on the board, or you have to have another Lord of the Cursed on the board as well, which takes time, which also takes away from its value. And of course, zombies are seeing very limited play anymore in the preliminary uh, PTQ tournaments that I played in for Standard. And you can actually see some of those videos and see how zombies did not even favor up against Black Green. It wasn't even a challenge, realistically. Um, and that's playing just Black Green. I mean, it's not even playing... Control. It's not even playing control magic. I mean, zombies are getting dominated just by beefier, bigger creatures, and they're getting dominated by control magic. And control magic right now is about 50% of the decks that are out there. In fact, actually, it's a lot higher than that. With Torrential Gearhulk, you know, destroying about just anything in its path until they cast the card, or Seasons Hunger decks just playing control and just... I mean, there's variations of Seasons Hunger decks. There's blue-white, there's blue-white. I mean, there's just, there's just so many variants of control, you know, but red-blue seems to be the really control. And so, Lord of the Cursed, you're going to be able to get for a price point of under 40 cents on MTGO Online. So, again, you can build a great zombie deck for a cheap cost now on MTGO Online. So let's not see so bound. The next on my list is Le Nisa, the once planeswalker that we knew um, that barely gets to see any play anymore because people are so focused on Delirium in their black green decks. And of course, Nisa is not a battering on any of these cards. They're all these are all really great cards. Dark Salvation is really good. You know, Relentless is really good. And so is Nisa, but she's going to drop. Um, we seen her a couple weeks ago at price points that were really high, roughly around $14, and she's going to drop yet again. Last time I checked, she was hovering around $8.50. I think she's going to be dropping into the $7.50 mark this week. So if you ever thought about picking up Nisa on the cheap, you can pick up an accelerating Lily Planeswalker to boost up your other creatures with Winding Constrictor and a black green deck. Do it now. But Nisa, she's going to be on the drop. And as we're talking about black green and the lack of play of black green, this is a hard word that I can never pronounce. Ish Ishkana Griff Widow. Right, um, it's very hard for me now. So it's a big spider, three five delirium. And if you have delirium, you know you get three one two spider tokens with reach, and that's really great. And in the late game, you can tap seven mana. Six colorless and one black, making a great multicolored deck, especially black-green, to deal one damage to your opponent straight to their face for every spider that you have out. So, pretty good card. But, just like all black-green cards, even Grim Flare is going to drop in value. In fact, I don't even think Grim Flare is worth the $15 price tag or $16 that it renders right now. And actually, Grim Flare is another card that I'm throwing as a bonus, as I'm talking about Black Green, that is going to drop in value. We once seen it at a $20 price point. It was almost competing with Torrential Gear Hulk in pricing. Could you not believe that just six weeks ago? 
Yeah, not anymore. It's actually fallen to roughly around $15, and I expect it to drop even further coming into this week, about $14, maybe even $13.50. Me, personally, it's an $8 to $9 card. I've never went up against Grim Flare and said, wow, that changed the game. Never one time have I ever done that. And I think the price is going to reflect that card. I think, truly, it's an $8 to $9 card. It's overinflated, in my humble opinion, and just like anything in black green right now, it is plummeting in value because there's less demand. And when there's less demand, let's face it, the price drops. Whew, so that brings us to the last two cards we're going to talk about, and this one is going to be the Harbinger, and that is the Planeswalker. To me, this is like Sort of, of a good Planeswalker. I mean, actually, it's not just sort of good. It's really good. It's really good for casting Madness cards. So, basically, you know, you can draw a card and discard a card. So, it gives you draw ability. And think about Madness. Fury Temper, Alms of the Veins. Yeah. I mean, just think about that card in a kind of synergistic black-white red deck. Isn't that what Marty Vehicles kind of is? And Marty Vehicles now Cyborg's Harbinger. And also, too, Harbinger just gets rid of Caesar's Hunger. You can cast it on a Cyborg, and when they tap Caesar's Hunger, it exiles a tapped creature. It gets rid of enchantments. It's one of the few things that gets rid of enchantments. So it's a very powerful card. I see it going up in value, actually, when things start to rotate out at the end of September. Um, so Harbinger, I think, is going to go up by roughly 5-10%, to but it's going to hold its value. So, I think it's going to go up. It had about a $10 value on MTG Online. I can see it going up to about 11 possibly 12 bucks. So, a nice 10-20% to 20 increase for Harbinger. And certainly one of those Planeswalkers to keep your eye out on. And check them on the weekly. And again, it comes in with a 4 loyalty, and it only costs 4 to cast. It has a plus 2 ability, so you can get it to 6. It's negative is negative eight, so you can go plus six it first turn it comes in plus eight it and then blow it up. So in three turns, it's one of the rare planeswalkers that blows up and can use this ability in three turns after actually two turns after casting it. You can actually use its negative eight ability, which is search for a creature or artifact, put that in the play, put it on the battlefield, and it gains haste, and then you return it to your hand. So. That is insane for a lot of cards that you just big beefy creatures that you can just bring out and just slap it on the board. And I can actually see this being played in Commander. Um, you can actually be seeing this and played in decks where you can only run one of anything. This is, I mean, this has so much value in so many formats. Realistically, I think it's a card that's going to continue to go up, and especially this week. Last but not least, we cannot get away without talking about Torrential Gear My Hulk. Um, it is the highest Gear Hulk. At one point in time, it was crazy to think that Gear Hulk was carrying such a low value that some of the cards that I mentioned, like Nisa of Zendikar, was actually worth more money than Gear Hulk. Torrential Gear Hulk. Well, Torrential Gear Hulk is here to stay. It is the number one deck that you, number one card that you'll see in standard decks. It actually controlled one of the preliminary uh, Pro Tour events that I played in, it was 60% of the field. Torrential Gear Hulk was in 60% of the decks. Whether directly or indirectly, and Torrential Gear Hulk, just as of a week ago, was $27 on MTGO Online. I actually think it's going to drop a little bit because the last PTQ event, the last Pro Tour uh, preliminary that I played in on MTGO Online, we've seen more Seasless Hunger. Like, we wanted to see more of that. Well, we're going to see more of it until we have an answer for it. Even though Etherworks Marvel, some can say, is broken, there's just an array of things just to play control, get your gear hulk out. I mean, there's there's a lot of cards in this game. Uh, what is it? Nisa's Renewal that can give you just seven life and add, you know, you can just throw three uh, lands on the board. There's also other colorless spells where you can hard cast, basically, Caesar's Hunger as well, and you have Etherworks Marvel. And 
Again, you could harbinger Caesar's Hunger if you actually wanted to outside the box. Caesar's Hunger just has so much utility right now. Um, and you can just even fling it after it's out, so you can deal 10 damage straight to the face of your opponent. Um, that's just another thing, just an idea. So, Caesar's Hunger is going to go up, and unfortunately, I think it's going to hover, and, and it's very unpredictable, because week to week, Caesar's Hunger goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, and that's basically on what I see in the PTQs, the Pro Tour preliminaries, and basically from what I'm seeing this week, Caesar's Hunger is going to go up in value, so from its $20 price point, well, I already talked about Seas Hunger. We're talking about Gear Hulks. And that's my whole point. Gear Hulk is going to see the same thing as Seas Hunger. It's going to go up, it's going to go down, but I don't think we're going to see it drop below where it used to be at $18, below well below 18 bucks. It used to be 15 bucks. We're not going to see that. Those days are over. It's going to be always between 20 and $30. Where are we going to see it this week? I see it stabilizing between $23 and $25 on MTGO online play. This might be one of my most unpredictable cards. I actually have a squiggly line next to it right here, meaning that it's going to sustain value. That's all I have for that. And also, one other free card that I'm just going to give to you is Collective Brutality. Wow. What a card. Actually, Collective Brutality is actually going to go up in value. Um, I think it, it actually had a darn near $10 price point, but Zombies kind of kicked in, and it dropped. But now Zombies have fallen off the board, and it's actually now starting to go up, and as well it should be. There's a lot of control decks that are out there, and this just gets rid of a Sorcery or Instacart out of somebody's hand, plus you can discard and use Madness. You can do 2 damage to the face and gain 2 life. I mean, just look at the card. It's, it's like the best standard. It's like It's not a charm. But it's darn near a charm, and it's one of the best ones in standard that we have. In fact, actually, it has high playability in modern. So even when things rotate out, Collective Brutality is going to be very useful in modern. Because modern, you deal with things like Thoughtsies, Duresses, um, you know, Surgical Extractions, Counterspells. All those types of cards are in modern. Well, Collective Brutality gets rid of an instant or a sorcery out of somebody's hand. So, if anything, they're just going to waste a counterspell on Collective Brutality. So, therefore, you can cast and hard cast the cards that you really want. So, anyway, Collective Brutality, I think, is going to go up in value. It was down to, last time I checked, $6 on MTG Online. Yeah, I think that's going to change. It's going to go up. Zombies have fallen. People did not put this in their zombie decks. I do not know why they didn't put Collective Brutality. It's a really good card. Um, it's good for using Madness. I think it has great value in Black Red, where you can use, you know, Fury Temper um, for its Madness cost, deal three damage to somebody's face or a creature for one red, or Alms to the Veins, deal three damage to somebody's face and gain three life for one black. Are you, it's insane. Collective Brutality just triggers so many things. It triggers Madness, and itself is just a great card. Great utility. If anything, it should be in a lot of people's sideboards, or at least one or two of in main decks. Especially for things that are looking for removal that have, especially zombies. I mean, it should, just, it should have been random zombie decks. I, I still don't understand it. But, because it was not, and I think the demand's going to go up, especially in modern, and also with this control that we're now seeing, it's going to go up. I'm predicting it's going to pass the $7 mark coming into this week. I wouldn't expect, it wouldn't be a crazy idea if it goes to $7.50, possibly back to an $8 price margin. So there you have it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I try to keep this as short as I can. Um, tell me what you like. Tell me what you dislike about the video. I can only learn that through messages and comments in the comments section. So guys, those are 12 cards that I believe that are going to go up or down in this coming up week's Magic the Gathering, and again, all these prices reflect MTGO, or Magic the Gathering online pricing. Guys, it's crazy, but zombies have fallen, and check out for my other videos, because you'll see, I'm going to be loading up what I did at the Pro Tour preliminaries, you'll see actually went 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, I didn't even see a thir th third game match when I played Black Green until round 4, so that was pretty good, I was actually ranked 5th in the preliminary PTQ until I lost, I'm going to admit it, I lost versus Ceaseless Hunger. <laughs> and that's why Ceaseless Hunger is of value. I was ranked fifth until that round. Anyway, guys, um, so that is it. 
like the button, hit the like button, and also subscribe. If you want to see more future videos or past videos, feel free to click on my channel. Alright guys, have a good one. And a good week.